Hey, what's going on guys? It's Divine and welcome back to the last part of our new user in-depth guide and this is part four. So hopefully we'll cover most everything that you guys need to start out in New World. And again, I just want to start this by saying that New World has tweeted out that they won't be changing anything prior to launch. So that's why I feel that this guide will be relevant at launch. I don't know for how long things can change very quickly. So just keep that in mind. But without further ado, let's just jump right in. Alright, so the first thing I wanted to go over is actually information about all the different towns. So, as of the first one we're in right here is First Light Village. Now, this village suggested level is between 1 and 25. And some of the features that you can actually find here are a well, honey, and then for the faction specific supply cart, this one's actually going to give you food here. All right, so for the second town we're looking at is Everfall Village. Now, again, this is going to be levels 1 through 25. And again, you're going to find a well, honey, and for the faction supply cart, it's going to be a hide supply cart. And moving on to Monarch's Bluff Village. Again, this is going to be a starting zone, so your suggested levels are going to be between 1 and 25. And again, we're going to be able to find a well. And then for the faction supply cart, this is actually going to be an iron supply cart here. All right, so for our fourth town here, it's going to be Windsward Village, and this is going to be our last of our starting areas. So this, again, is going to be levels 1 through 25, and here you're going to be able to find a well milk, honey, and then for the faction-specific item, it's going to be a fiber supply cart. All right, so moving right along, we have Brightwood Village here, and this now is going to be from levels 25 to 35. And in this town, you can find, again, a well honey and then a faction lumber supply cart all right so up next we have cutlass keys and again this is going to be from levels 25 to 35 and also you're going to find a well honey and just like brightwood you're going to get a faction lumber supply cart all right so up next is weaver's fen village and again this is going to be the last of the 25 to 35 zones but here you're not going to find any fresh water you're only going to be able to find honey and then a faction oil supply cart unfortunately up next we have morning dale now this is going to be a level 40 to level 50 zone and we're getting up there now um but you will be able to find a well honey and then a faction iron supply cart here and here we have restless shore which is going to be the second level 40 to 50 zone and here you can actually find a bit more you'll so you'll find a well milk honey and then a faction hide supply cart all right, so second from the last, we have Ebenscale Reach. Now this is probably my favorite town. And this level is between 50 and 60. And here you can find water. And then for the faction, it's going to be a fiber supply cart. All right, and lastly, we have Reekwater Hamlet, which is going to be between levels 55 and 60. Here you can find water and a faction food supply cart. Now these last two towns I feel like are probably some of the cooler towns that you'll actually come across. I feel like early on some of the towns are pretty grand and pretty awesome to visit, but there's something about these last two and the aesthetic behind them that really just kind of is very cohesive and just cool scenery to just walk around and notice. Alright, since we're on the topic of towns, let's talk about houses. And you will get your first house at level 20. Now this is not given to you, you do have to purchase this house, and there are three out of the four starting areas, I think Everfall is the only one that doesn't have one, that you can buy houses for 2500 gold. Now you get your second house at level 40, and the third house at level 60, and these houses do a couple different things here. Now the most common reason that you're going to buy a house is going to be for that awesome extra teleport, but you'll notice as I walk around here, it will show that you need a territory standing level for specific houses, so keep that in mind first of all. And the next part is each house does have a different type of cooldown for its teleport and other benefits that you can get out of the house itself. Um, but you actually have to go into purchasing the house before you'll see this menu. Unfortunately, that video footage got corrupted on me, so this is all I currently have. 
just know that before you buy a house, you want to check out a few other ones to see if you need to save up maybe just an extra 5,000 gold to get that better teleport and better um, attributes on the house itself. So let's go over the second part of why you want to buy a house, and that is because you can add storage chests to your house, which actually increases the storage shed in town. So let's talk about the different tiers and what you can expect to get out of that. All right, so for the storage chest, we actually have four different tiers, but starting off for the tier one, so far there's three different ones that you can get, and that's the old wood storage chest, the hewn log storage chest, and the mossy rock storage chest, and these are all going to add about 200 plus to your storage currently. All right, and then moving on to tier two, we have the stone chest, the hunter chest, and the iron chest. Now these are all going to give you 300 plus storage added to them. And then going straight into tier three, we now have the hope chest, the booty chest, and the dynasty chest, which is going to give you yet again, another hundred on top of that. Now this isn't to say that you're just gonna get 400. I think it depends on what chest you get because some of them can give you like 425 or something like that. And then moving on to the tier four, and then you're going to get into the golden steel chest the cursed chest and the polished marble chest so these are all different ways to actually add to your storage which is a very awesome way to do things um, so getting a house is very important but finding the right house in the right town is also just as important all right so one thing i wanted to show you guys on the map here that i didn't know for a while was when you go to place your camp you know how it'll tell you that you're too near something that you're unable to place the camp if you actually open up your map and zoom in, you'll see these dotted lines here. And those are what the area that you cannot put a camp in. So just outside this line, you can put your camp there. And it's just a good little thing to know. All right, so the one last thing that I want to talk about in this video is going to be the forts on the map. Now, these are going to be PvP areas where you actually have to battle out to take control over in that area of the fort. But when you do get control and you're on the same faction that has control of these forts, you do get some awesome benefits. So part of those benefits is you're going to get a 5% increase experience gain and a 20% increase into the influence of that territory. So any territory uh, influence that you want to get, you get a 20% increase on that. So that's pretty awesome. So that's not all of the bonuses that you're going to get when your uh, faction actually holds one of these forts. So you're actually going to get additional things. So like First Light gets a benefit of fast travel weight cost reduction. Uh, Monarch Bluff actually gets a fast travel distance cost lowered for the Azoth per 100 meters for the controlling faction. And then you have places like Windsward that increases volume of items gained when gathering by 5% when they hold the fort in that faction. Everfall sees a reduced trading tax by 5%. And Brightwood reduces housing tax by 5%. Then you go to Cutlass Keys, which reduces the base Azoth cost of fast travel by 50%. Uh, Weaver's Fen increases coin experience, territory standing, and faction token rewards from faction missions by 5% for the controlling faction. And then moving on to Restless Shore, you increase your coins, experience, and faction tokens as well for the Corrupted Breaches by 5% for those controlling factions. And then moving on to Morningdale, you're going to get an increased coin and experience reward from Expeditions by 5%. Evan Scale Reach actually sees a reduce in refining taxes by 5%. And lastly, Reek Water reduces crafting taxes by 5%. So there's some actual cool buffs um, that I feel like a lot of people don't actually know what these buffs are doing in the background when their controlling faction holds one of these forts in the town that they're in. 
All right, so that kind of concludes our in-depth new user guide series part four. Now, this isn't to say I won't do any more of these series later on when the game comes out, because I do want to do some end game stuff. There's a lot of content out there, and I do want to do more of these um, big series videos for you guys so that you guys have all the nitty gritty details that I've had to scour over the web to kind of figure out and put in one place. And as always guys, if you like this video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And if you want to see something new in the future, please feel free to leave a comment of what you want to see in the future. I will be doing other games eventually, but New World is just up and coming and that's what I've been focusing on. So once that releases and after a few months, this channel will probably cover other games as well. So if there's other games you want to see in the future, let me know and I will be sure to check those out. But until the next time, I'll see you guys then.